Okay, okay let's uh, pray and then we'll get started. Um, Father, we, we come before you today, Lord. We thank you for the uh, weekend. We thank you for the time that we could spend in your presence, Lord, uh, looking into your word. We thank you for the uh, week that's ahead and uh, we thank you that you are there um, but always with us each and every moment of every day, Lord. We thank you for that uh, great uh, assurance and reassurance of your presence, Father God. And we thank you that, um, Lord, with you we are more than conquerors, Lord, as your word says. And uh, Lord, no matter what challenges, Father God, we thank you. We can always uh, declare that greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Father, we thank you that you've made us overcomers, Lord. We thank you for, uh, yes, Lord, great is... Um, the, 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 your power uh, that is at work in us, God. And, uh, and Lord, we pray that um, this week, Lord, that uh, you will enable us to experience, Lord, the greatness uh, of your power that is at work in us, Lord. Lord, whether it's um, Lord, uh, to, to love the unlovable, to forgive the unforgivable, oh God, but um, or to, to lay hands on the sick and to watch them recover, God, to... Um, to snatch people out of darkness and release them into light, oh God, into your kingdom. God, um, I pray, Lord, that you would, um, that we would experience that firsthand um, right through this week. And we, we just commit ourselves into your mighty hands, Father God. We thank you. We thank you. And uh, just want to say um, thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for saving us, washing us, and uh, Lord, for planting us, God. Um, in your kingdom, we thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Um, amen. Okay. Right. So, um, so last class, um, when we looked at last Monday, we looked at um, uh, the ministry of the teacher, and we also looked uh, specifically at uh, uh, how the Lord Jesus uh, taught, right? We saw some of uh, the methods in which he, uh, with which he taught, um, which was uh, with, you know, his teaching was characterized by wisdom. Uh, it had so much authority. Uh, he also used uh, illustrations and, uh, you know, metaphors and, and parables um, to teach. So everyone could relate to what he was. He was, he was sharing some deep spiritual truths uh, about heaven and, and, the, and, the, and the spiritual things and, and everyone could relate to it um, because of, of these things, right? The way in which, manner in which he shared, used parables. So we looked at some of the uh, parables. We looked at Luke 15 specifically, the parable of the lost uh, sheep, lost coin, and, uh, and the prodigal son. So we looked at it in detail. And also, uh, I remember saying that, you know, you can go through that table of parables, which are there. Some of the parables, like, um, you know, which are categorized and listed under these different uh, topics. So I hope you you had an opportunity to uh, go through. Um, there are about nine categories, and uh, this is not an exhaustive list, right? So uh, I hope you had a chance to go through it. Um, but if not, I just want to encourage you guys to, um, you know, read through, study these parables, and um, and, and and really uh, receive the truth of uh, what, the, what the Lord was teaching about, you know, various things like the kingdom, uh, about forgiveness, about uh, about the law, about His return, like so many wonderful, uh, uh, you know, uh, truths that He shared through parables. So we. Um, we Every time we remember the parables, we remember these truths also, right? So, um, so just want to ask, like, uh, I I hope uh, uh, some of you went through. So, uh, was everyone anyone able to go through the entire list of parables you read through? Anyone, um, or anyone yet to go through? You can probably just put up your hands if you were able to go through the entire list. Okay, Mangi went through. Okay, that's good. Uh, Dinesh. Oh, sorry, I didn't go through. I wasn't. I was. Oh, you you know, yet to. to okay, you yet to go through. Okay, okay, fine. So Dinesh, you were able to read through, or you're yet to um, complete the list. Yet to complete. Okay, fine. Okay, so just wanted to um, like uh, encourage us to go through that list. Okay, of parables, uh, read through, um, and. Um, 
and you know come back with any questions or any thoughts um, that you might have uh, but it's very interesting right as we go through these parables very interesting and also uh, you know it gives us an insight about um, the currency that was used you know like talents denarii currency that was used in those times it also gives us uh, some some uh, you know uh, about the uh, about the society about some other practices there and and so on so uh, it's interesting right in all aspects it's interesting so um, study you know read through the parables study them and uh, yeah uh, so I just wanted to uh, share that. Okay, so last class we also looked at, um, you know, in the early church, um, the, the kind of teaching ministry that was done, right? So uh, we looked at the book of Acts, some of the uh, verses there, which talked about how the apostles, um, you know, preached and, and then they taught. Okay, so uh, especially Acts 5 verse 42, uh, and daily in the temple in every house, they did not stop uh, teaching and preaching. Right. So, so they preached, they proclaimed, this is the truth. And uh, uh, I'm sure they, they would have exhorted, encouraged, inspired people when they did that. But they also uh, went into uh, the details of, and probably reasoned, and shared the reason for why they were proclaiming that truth, right? So they were teaching the why, uh, the how, uh, which is what happens when we um, when we actually look at teaching. You know, it, it goes beyond the uh, inspirational or the motivational or the, or the proclam proclamation uh, of the truth, and it goes into you know why why this is so. Right? It 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 can be uh, reasoning. It can be um, you know a lot more uh, depth into uh, the nuts and bolts of you know why these things work this way. Right. So. Um, so they did that. They did both that, and then that is captured. You know, that is uh, recorded for us. So, um, so in the early church, you know, this was this was done, and uh, and we also studied some of the instructions for the uh, believer. Uh, we read about the you know the teaching believer, the one who is uh, in the body of Christ. You know, like the the, the believer who is placed in the body of Christ and is a member. And and uh, we see that yes, as a as a believer, you have the you know the, there is the aspect of the believer who's who may not be in the ministry gift or the ministry office of teacher, but is teaching. Right, he or she has the ability to teach and is receiving revelation and and studying the word and uh, teaching the word. Right, so Romans twelve talks about. Some of the gifts which are mentioned there, and, and then uh, Paul writes and he says that um, you know if it is ministry in our ministry, he is in uh, teaching and so on, and also Colossians three uh, sixteen where he talks about let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, okay, let let His word abide in you, stay in you, dwell in you, as you do this, and uh, it talks about admonition, talks about. Uh, uh, you know, even uh, ministering in songs and hymns, spiritual songs, and he also mentions teaching, right? So, so, and then of course we looked at the ministry gift of teaching, where um, the Lord Himself places this as one of the ministry gifts. He calls some to be teachers, to be in the body of Christ, um, to in order to equip the body of Christ, so that uh, equip the saints uh, for the work of ministry. Right, so uh, again, the ministry um, could be fivefold. The ministry could be anything else that we saw, you know, like uh, in the uh, uh, in in Romans twelve also, you know, some of the things listed there to to encourage and also to raise up other you know teachers just like themselves um, to, to equip the people for the work of ministry. Which results in the edification, which results in the edification of the body of Christ, which results in you know the church being edified, the church becoming stronger, and uh, and that's what um, the teaching uh, what, uh, and the ministry gift does, uh, as also teaching, right? And um, and then we looked at um, how we are called to do and teach. So teaching is not just an offloading of instructions or uh, or um, you know. Um, uh, instructions and and things to be done and things not to do, um, but but the thing is that it is applicable uh, to your to the congregation or to the listener, uh, and equally to the one who is uh, you know in, imparting the instruction. Right, so it brings everyone, uh, it makes everyone accountable. Um, uh, so so the Lord teaching 
in Matthew 5 saying that, um, you know, whoever does and teaches, uh, he shall be called great in the kingdom of God. And Romans 2 also, we saw that Paul, you know, you know saying that, um, now, admonishing, uh, rebuking, saying, "You do you who preach that a man should not steal? Do you yourself steal? Right? Um, do you who teach? You know, do you not teach yourself? So, um, so the emphasis is on living, right? Doing, obeying, um, and also teaching, right? Um, and also the Lord, uh, you know, uh, giving a rebuke, saying, "Do not teach uh, as doctrine the commandments of men." Right, um, he's talk, actually talking about empty worship, uh, and in vain they worship me. In Matthew 15, um, he looked at that. I saw, you know, and in, the Lord saying that uh, you know these people draw near with their lips, meaning in words, in rituals, in in things that they are doing, but their heart is far away from me. You know, their hearts are not engaged. Their hearts are far away from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine. The commandments of men so he's saying it's it's vain it's futile it's empty when you teach the commandments of men as doctrine so um so when it comes to commandments of men you know uh or humanistic things um uh and uh you know we can always share like you know these are these are some practical things that you can do and this is my opinion like paul would say you know as one who's interested with the with these with the with this revelation and and as one who's walked with the Lord, I I share this, right? And and he, he makes uh, he prefaces that by saying, I think it's one Corinthians nine or you know or eight. He says you know it's uh, it's not a commandment of the Lord. So he makes that very clear, right? Yeah, and uh, so so also you know. When we teach as doctrine uh, some of the commandments of men, it does not have value, right? Uh, it does not have, uh, uh, you know, when we teach it as doctrine, when we when we say, okay, here's some practical wisdom, here's some, you know, here are some things that have helped, I found to be helpful, and so on. Then then it's you know then it's the right place. Okay, um, so uh, so we need to be uh, careful in that, right? Um, and as a church, you know, some, sometimes we, uh, you know, as as a body of Christ, uh, we 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 teach uh, our hearts are sincere. You know, the objective is, uh, oh, we don't want the person to, uh, you know, we want to protect the person and right? protect the believer. And sometimes, um, okay, page uh, page number it's nineteen, Charles. 1920 just doing a quick review of what we uh, shared last class so um so we might teach uh, you know with all sincerity you know as commandments of men we give these things as a, as a protective thing for example we might say okay you uh, you know when you're born again you become a believer you wait for some time you know till you take what baptism wait for a year uh, just make sure you know you are you're following the lord and then then you can take baptism right water be baptized in water or you might say you know well the lord uh yes definitely wants to empower you and fill you with the spirit but wait uh be baptized in water and then you can ask the lord to be to fill you with the spirit and and you know fill you with the gifts and so on so um the uh, you know, sometimes the objective is that, okay, uh, we don't want you to go back, you know, don't want you to um, be baptized and then backslide and go back. And we want you to make, you know, be strong and um, and then, you know, do these things. But actually, that's, that is not biblical, right? That is, that is not scriptural. So uh, some of these things, right? So these can be, you know, I just mentioned this, this top of my head, but then there could be other things that we are teaching um as doctrine the commandments of men right so we need to be careful okay then we also saw that we are called to teach uh, and uh, you know teach all groups of people uh, as the lord would call uh teach the nations you know in the great commission we see you know make disciples baptizing them teaching them to observe all things that commanded you so when he says make disciples he says make disciples of all the nations all the people group um Okay, and then we also saw that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. 
right? The Holy Spirit, the Lord very specifically said the Holy Spirit, you know, he will teach, he will guide you, uh, he will teach you all things, he will bring to remembrance. So we have this wonderful uh, gift of uh, the teacher being with us and we can turn to him, uh, depend on him to receive, uh, you know, to be by him, right? And of course, uh, you know, he will he will teach us. He will teach us in many ways. He will teach us when we sit at his feet uh, and uh, alone uh, on our own. He will teach us when we are listening to uh, you know um, the the ministry office or the ministry gift. You know that's why um, the ministry gift is there in the body of Christ. He will teach us in in many ways. You know, when we're doing a simple Bible study with people, and he will teach us in many ways. So he will teach us. He will instruct us um, even as we you know, uh, take part in all these kinds of, uh, for uh, you know, all these kinds of uh, informal or informal gatherings, right? Uh, he will teach us and he's a teacher. And we also looked at 1 John 2 verse 27, which talks about the anointing and um, just clarified that, right? That verse where uh, we see that you don't need anyone to teach you because you have the anointing. The anointing which abides teaches you concerning all things. Uh, and just as it has taught you, you will abide. So it's talking anointing, of course, talking about the power and the, the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Spirit. Um, so here, uh, John saying that the anointing abides in you and uh, and you don't need anyone to teach. So many people have uh, you know misapplied that truth to say, I, I'm on my own, I'm a, I'm a soloist, you know, um, I'm on my own. I don't need the help of anyone to teach me. I'll receive from the Lord, and and that's enough. Okay. Now that is uh, that is not what this uh, text means. It's talking specifically about discerning. It's talking about false teachers. It's talking about discerning uh, what is false, what is good, and you know what is uh, false, what is true, and what is false. Um, so uh, it's about discernment, which will teach um, teach the believer. Right. The Holy Spirit dis helps us to discern what is right and what is wrong, what is heresy and what is of the truth. So, um, so that is um, that is where we. I think that is where we stop. Okay. Okay. Uh, so today, let, let's look at point seven, uh, page twenty-one. Tw sorry, page twenty. Um, teach with the wisdom of the Spirit. Right. We uh, we we have the privilege of teaching and receiving. Um, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, and and He teaches. He compares spiritual things with spiritual, like one Corinthians two and verse thirteen. Um, you know, these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Concern uh, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So uh, it means that um, that. Uh, the Holy Spirit compares, brings a connection, brings a comparison between, you know, um, uh, what is there in in Scripture, comparing spiritual things with uh, spiritual things, with other teaching, and and brings a kind of a uh, a correlation, right? And uh, we see that in 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 the uh, in the in the sermon which uh, uh, you know of the early church sermons of the early church, and where people just made that connection like peter you know, made that connection and and said okay this is what was prophesied by prophet joel um james you know saying this is what how is written that um where god says that he will raise up the tabernacle of david and the gentiles will see the lord so we see that uh, comparing spiritual things with spiritual and making that um making that connection and and teach so this is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Teach with the wisdom of the Spirit, right? Um, the other thing, the other instruction that we see with regard to teaching is that um, uh, Galatians 6, 6 talks about, uh, uh, it's an exhortation. Again, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. We see the same thing in, uh, in 1 Corinthians, um, I think it's in chapter 9, yeah, where Paul says, um, uh, chapter 9 and verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. If we have sown spiritual things for you, is it a great thing if we reap your material things? Um, and But actually in the whole chapter, he says, no, we've not done that. 
okay so uh, the principle is that um, uh, you know as as a principle god has allowed this place this saying okay uh, if someone is teaching you just go ahead and you know share um, and all good things with the one who teaches but just wanted to say that it's not an entitlement right it's not uh, it's not by force um, you know it's not by saying okay i'm and how i've taught you therefore you must give you know it's not a sense of entitlement and uh, and so we see that very clearly in paul's teaching in 1 corinthians 9 he says you know we have this right but i will i chose not to use it okay so this is what is there in scripture like he also quotes from the old testament and he says you know um, well it, it says in the in, in the law of moses that you shall not muzzle an ox or tie up the mouth of uh, an ox that is threshing the grain if it wants to you know take a mouthful of the grain that it is threshing with it. stock you know whoever goes to war you know, of his own expense, or and he, he talks about uh, someone who plants a vineyard, someone who takes care of the flock, and you know, will they not, uh, uh, you know, make use of the produce and and so on? But he goes on to say, you know, we have not done that, so that the gospel might not be hindered. Okay, so while we see this principle, it is not to be. You know, uh, used like uh, an entitlement, saying, "Hey, I'm here as a teacher, and I'm teaching. Uh, therefore, you know, you need to honor in these ways." Paul did not do that. He said, "You know, uh, I, I just, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I worked, and uh, these hands have worked, and so I, I did this. I supported uh, myself. I supported uh, my team." And I did the work of ministry, and specifically with the Corinthian church, he didn't really uh, you know, take their support in order to travel and do ministry. Other churches were supporting him. Right? So, so that's the thing. So he, he so we, we understand right, by the principle and the example that uh, it is not something like an entitlement. It is not something that is to be used as a manipulation, uh, but it is um, it is the, it, as a free will offering, right? So, so as a uh, you know as an encouragement. So that is something that we see. Okay. Um, the next one that we see is uh, when it comes to uh, instructions of teaching is um, Paul saying. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, to Timothy and to Titus, um, exhorting them over and over again about ensuring that they teach the right thing. Okay, ensuring and the uh, sound doctrine. Okay, ensuring sound doctrine. So, um, if you if you look at one uh, first Timothy, we, we we saw these verses. You know, when we started, um, uh, I think uh, you know when we looked at biblical preaching, especially you know we we looked at uh, several of these verses, rightly dividing the word. Let's look. Let's look look at uh, look through some of these verses. Uh, first Timothy one and verse three, as I urged you. When I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Okay, and if you see um, the the verses following that, he talks about why you know that um, they should not uh, teach any other doctrine. Uh, he says that um, uh, verse four: nor give heed to fables and endless endless genealogies which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Okay, so God's word brings about faith and, uh, and rightly presenting, rightly um, you know, teaching the word of God produces faith. But, uh, you know, he, he writes in verse 5 also, now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, pure conscience, from sincere faith, from which some having strayed have, turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. Okay, So saying, you know, this is causing disputes, divisions, rather than edification. It is causing the opposite of what godly teaching does or what good doctrine does. It is causing dispute. It's Probably it's truth which is presented with the wrong spirit, wrong motive, wrong attitude, uh, or it is uh, a wrong teaching itself, right? So, um, so saying, you know, this 
results in, or if it's you know fables and endless genealogies and all these things, it results in uh, uh, dispute, right? So he's saying, you know, you very specifically says charge that they teach. Be careful, you know, you you charge them, you you instruct them, you command them that they teach no other thing, uh, no other doctrine. Okay, and uh, the same uh, First Timothy chapter six, uh, he says, you know, if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so he says, um, you know, if anyone does not consent to wholesome words, the words of our Lord Jesus, and to the doctrine which accords with godliness. Okay, so this teaching which is in line with godliness or the character and nature of God or holiness, um, then if anyone is teaching in that manner, he's proud knowing nothing and is obsessed with, again, he says, disputes, arguments over words, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, and so on. So, um, so Paul is uh, saying, you know, ensure that there is uh, sound doctrine. And we see that in Second Timothy also. He says, you know, there will come a time when people will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, right? So, so uh, the importance of sound doctrine. Okay, and also to um, Titus, he writes, he says, um, you know, uh, about uh, false teachers, and he says, mouths must be uh, stopped who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not, for the sake of dishonest gain. So here's teaching because of wrong motive okay so it's teaching for the sake of gain okay so um we don't know in what way it was it was right um probably they were saying things which uh, caused people to give right uh, so so that they could benefit or maybe they were you know bringing people uh, under intimidating people manipulating people whatever right saying they were doing it for the sake of dishonest gain, right? Um, so Paul uh, instructing thing, you know, ensure that there is sound doctrine. So as teachers who are placed in the body of Christ, so uh, we just make, uh, we're doubly sure that we're teaching the right thing, teaching things that make for sound doctrine, okay? Okay, um, any questions so far before we get into the next one? Any any questions? Anything that you might want to add? Okay. Okay. Um, next one is about um, women teachers. You know, what about teachers who are women? Because uh, there are some very challenging passages. I mean, uh, scripture uh, verses, um, which seems to suggest otherwise. Okay, so. Um, I'm sure you would have studied it in detail in uh, hermeneutics, um, and so uh, so. I'll, but let, you know, we we'll, we'll just touch upon this topic. Um, so, what do you think? You know, uh, I'll just read two scriptures, two portions. You know, since we are in First Timothy, First um, Timothy chapter two, and uh, yeah, and uh, verse eleven. Um, let a woman learn in silence with all submission, verse 12. And I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. For Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into transgression. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if she will, if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Okay, So this is one. Uh, scripture and if we go back to 1 Corinthians 14 um, there also 1 Corinthians 14 and um, verse 34 let your women keep silent in the churches for they are not permitted to speak but they are to be submissive as the law also says and if they want to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it is shameful for women to speak in church. Um, and then, you know, uh, and then other things. Right, so uh, this is 34, 35. Okay, so, um, so I just wanted to ask us, you know, as a class, um, 
so what have you learned about you know uh, women teachers um, and also you know teaching uh, women in ministry in general and so on uh, anyone I'll go. I'll go first. Mm -hmm. um, in, in our local church, we have uh, actually the most amazing pre uh, teachers are women. Uh, our pastors, our leading pastor's wife, uh, Fiona, she, she she teaches you like she, the way she, she teach the word. You can actually understand. You can you. Although she doesn't teach as much as she, she can, but she she's the best teacher we have. And that made me understand that what Paul is saying here, it's he's writing the, these letters to specific churches, and we shouldn't take this uh, in, it's, it's, we should not generalize what he's saying here. Because God has given gifts to everyone, and we should allow people to use their gift according to what God has uh, or, or them. That's what, what that's what my what I, I, I've understood. understood. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Nangi. Thank you. Yeah. So from personal experience, you see that God using women in ministry, you know, um, equally, you know, or more, um, you know, uh, and powerfully and bearing fruit in, in ministry. So, you know, you see that, okay, uh, God is using them. So, you know, from personal experience, okay, you can say that. And so you see, okay, uh, maybe this is not something that can be, you know, generally generalized and used universally, but it has, uh, you know, there, there could be some reason why Paul is saying that. So, yeah. Okay, and Sam, um, Paul's instruction to women are contextual and uh, against the prevalent cultures in Ephesus and Corinth, yeah. So, uh, yeah, of course, we know uh, the first episode to the uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 14 for uh, 1434. Um, here, there he's writing to the Corinthian church, so that is then. And then in uh, First Timothy, uh, that instruction is to uh, the church in uh, 2 Timothy uh, when he's pastoring the church in Ephesus, so yeah, so uh, against the prevalent cultures in Ephesus and uh, Corinth, Corinth, right? So but it's in, uh, and and it's also thank you, Sam. So and it's also interesting to see, um, you know, to see to to see. Okay, what are some of those things uh, that were happening? That uh, the reason for you know Paul to write this. Okay, um, because when we look at Paul's ministry, when we look at um, uh, uh, you know the scripture, we don't see that. We don't see uh, women being uh, or or right in in Paul's ministry. We don't. We, we see that women playing a very important role. Right? We see that there are women who are in leadership. There are there are women who are apostles, uh, and uh, there are you know and a, and a great place to um, to to understand that is uh, Romans chapter sixteen. Right, Romans chapter sixteen, where he lists down um, greetings and uh, you know his best regards to a lot of people uh, at, at the close of uh, the letter, and uh, he's mentioning a lot of uh, women there. Right, so like Phoebe uh, is is one person who's mentioned there, sixteen and verse one. Phoebe, our sister, who's a servant of the church in Centuria, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and a sister in you has been a helper of many and of myself also okay greet priscilla and aquila you know priscilla and aquila and priscilla and aquila as uh, as a couple they did an amazing uh, work in ministering to apollos right apollos was a he was he was, he was good very articulate very uh, very strong mighty in the scriptures he was very bold refuting the jews um you know and and pointing from the scriptures saying that jesus is the uh, christ he's the messiah but he had to be taught right he had to be instructed accurately about about the holy spirit and uh, so uh, priscilla and Aquila did that right then um, he says, who, who risked their own necks for my life, 
to whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. So which means they continued, you know, their work of encouraging and teaching and, and uh, you know, ministering, right? Um, then uh, verse 6, greet Mary who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Junia, or Junia my cont countrymen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who were in Christ before me, right? So Junia is, uh, is a feminine gender there. Um, and then Amplius, uh, Urbanus, of course, is, is a male. And so we, we go through that list. We see Tryphena, uh, Persis, um, then who else? Uh, Julia, uh, and he says Nereus and his sister. So we see many people who are whom Paul greets, and he says, you know, these were, uh, you know, these labored with me, and so on. And you know, he uses the same term when he when he refers to Timothy. You know, he labored with me uh, in Christ. So uh, when uh, when he comes, you you receive him, right? So yeah, Philip's uh, daughters prophesying. Um, uh, Philip's four daughters. We we read about in Acts in the book of Acts um, when when they actually went and stayed with Philip. Um, that was Acts twenty one, is it? Um, yeah, Acts twenty one and uh, verse nine, right? So uh, so we we read that uh, twenty yeah twenty one verse eight and nine talks about Philip. And then verse nine talks about his daughters who prophesied and uh, and so on. So we see that uh, you know uh, people, women uh, being in ministry. So so the reason is that uh, uh, it's uh, uh, it is restricted to that particular culture, but particular place. Okay. So in uh, Corinth, for example, uh, we see um, you know uh, I, I just read uh, this that when Paul uses that word, um, let me just go there, 1 Corinthians 14, uh, all your women keep silent in churches, they're not permitted to speak. Um, you know, the the, um, the word that he uses there is leleo, okay, speak, um, which, which could be uh, even casual talk, which could be, uh, you know, random speaking. Um, it could be, um, uh, so uh, of that nature, right? Um, but normally, when you when you use words that uh, you know, if you're going to be uh, 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 you know, something that is uh, something something that is establishing speech, that is establishing something, um, there's another word which is used, which is Lego. Okay, you know, I think you remember Lego blocks, um, right? You build something, right? It's uh, it's got all those slots and uh, and you build something Lego, okay. so Lego was used uh, or Leleo. So both had different meanings, um, and Leleo was different in the sense it was it was casual talk, uh, also used for casual talk, right? So um, so this uh, person says that um, yeah, uh, when you see that Leleo is used, right? Women are uh, to keep silent, so yeah, it is uh, shameful to speak. So. So we understand that in that culture, current culture, it was, um, it uh, you know, uh, the women had the tendency to kind of disrupt the service, uh, and and if they did not understand and just you know uh, ask questions and so on. So Paul had to give this instruction, specific instruction for the women at Corinth. When it comes to Ephesus um, in First Timothy, that we see, um, so here. Let me just yeah. So, um, so Ephesus had some teachings which uh, which talked about how women were created first, okay. And so women can have authority. Had uh, the I think it was the Temple of Artemis. Uh, you know, I'll I'll just clarify that. But it had uh, you know three or four things where it said that the the women actually were came for they created first which was you know uh, totally not scriptural so women came first and also that the that particular deity will 
protect from all dangers of childbirth um, and and also that uh, the the teaching or um, this uh, what do you call it, transcendental teaching you know the women received it and they're supposed to pass on to men and 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 really uh, you know it was a very um, uh, demonic culture where uh, which talked about uh, you know sexual relationships as as a part of worship uh, which was there uh, during that time and uh, and where this knowledge was passed on to men you know in such ways and so on so um so paul is clearly he's he's you know he he knows the culture of that place and he's uh, addressing uh, some problems there and he's saying you know to teach or to have authority over a man but to be in silence and then he goes on to say because it's he's talking about you know adam being formed and then first and eve and also you know so we see that he's talking about she'll be saved in childbearing uh, you know if she continues in faith and uh, and so on. So we see that that was prevalent. That was a teaching which was prevalent uh, about that particular deity um, taking care of women if they would pledge their allegiance to the deity and so on. So he's, uh, you know, obviously he's re making reference to that also. Okay, so so we see the rest of scripture and we see the context in which he's written it um, to these, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and then we know. Also, you know, if you look at Ephesians 4, and we look at the ministry gifts, right? Ephesians 4, verse 11. Um, it's, uh, okay. Ephesians 4. Um, For he gave some to be apostles, uh, evangelists, uh, and some pastors, teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of inner ministry, and till we all come to the knowledge, um, the unity of the faith, and so on. So, so here, there is no... Um, you know, division of gender. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Avni's question: Can we say that, or is it true that as human beings we are male and female, but as spirit beings we are sons of God? I had someone say that. How do we understand that? Yeah. Um, so when we when we look at uh, you know Ephesians again, um, uh, where uh, I'm just looking at uh, the reference. Um, Paul says that you have been brought close. Uh, we have access, and um, yeah. Sorry, I'm just uh, yeah. So we see that there is no division of gender, right? There is, Nowhere do we see that um, uh, that one is inferior, one is superior, but uh, definitely the roles are different, uh, and definitely God has also put down a divine order in place and a design in place. So that is not to make one subservient to the other, but the roles are different. So here, um, as human beings, we are male and female, but as spirit beings, we are sons of God. Um, so. Um, I don't know if we can use that, uh, Avni, like um, um, to suggest endless, uh, you know, as children of God. Uh, I don't know if we can do that. I uh, I really don't know. But the fact is that um, God does not make a, make a difference, you know, when it comes to spiritual things because we are called together. Uh, I'm just trying to see the reference. Uh, um, you know, you are once darkness, but you are light. Walk as children of the light, and so on. Walk circumspectly. Uh, and then in that same verse, he talks about submission and so on. So um, uh, anyway, I'll, I'll find that reference. I'll share that. So the thing is, um, uh, so Avni, Avni, I'm not very sure, OK, uh, about that. Uh, because as spirit beings, we are sons of God, you know, we still, uh, you know, as new creations, also we we live as uh, you know we are very we have been created male and female with specific roles and so on. So um, so I don't know if we can use that. But the fact is that um, you know even in the fivefold we see that uh, there's no uh, you know it is it applies to men and women, right? If evang if men can be evang uh, if women can be evangelists, if women can be uh, 
uh, you know, um, teachers, women can be prophets. We see that prophets are there, you know, they as women. So it would apply, right? It would apply to all that uh, that they are free, and if God will call, and God does call some to be um, apostles, pastors, evangelists, prophets, teachers. So, so we see that. Right. So we need to understand this because, um, you know, uh, we know that in some cultures that, uh, you know, this is very prevalent, right? In some patriarchal cultures, this is very prevalent that women are probably, you know, you say, okay, you take care of children or children's, ch you know, children's ministry, women's ministry, and so on. And, uh, and unfortunately, it's the men who, you know, kind of put them down. Or, you know, uh, I remember last year, somebody did a study on women in ministry, um, and it was quite interesting just to find. I think this was Karnataka, rural Karnataka, and a few other places to see uh, in India, like Karnataka, India, um, and uh, did a study about uh, women in ministry, and quite an eye opener, like to to see. Uh, women pastors, women evangelists, teachers who are there, uh, and the kind of um, you know the kind of pushback they face from the church, but they are continuing nevertheless in the call of God, right? In in, in continuing uh, to be faithful in ministry. So it was quite interesting to you know to read about that. Okay. Okay. The other thing that we see uh, is to develop the ability to teach well, okay? Um, so when Paul writes to Timothy and also to Titus, he talks about uh, uh, you know, all the qualities that a person might, uh, might have or should have um, to be uh, an overseer, to be a bishop, right? Um, and uh, to be, a, a, uh, to be uh, looking after, to be doing spiritual ministry. And he also very clearly mentions about uh, one ability, which is uh, ability to teach. So able to teach. Um, First Timothy three, we see uh, he lists down everything, and then he says able to teach. Right. Uh, Second Timothy two twenty four again he says able to teach, and also in Titus uh, chapter one, I think, uh, where he says. Um, uh, verse nine, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort and convict those who contradict, that he may be both uh, exhort and uh, convict those who contradict. So again, he talks about it. so. So this is something that um, you know, as teachers, we grow in, right? Uh, we need to grow in. So that's the instru instruction that we see. You know, develop the ability to teach. Okay, so um, okay, so we'll take a break. We'll we'll come back. Uh, we'll we'll spend some time on that. Okay, right. <laughs> 